Hello there, I'm Vivi Cameron and in the video today I'm going to show you how I made these easy and beautiful purses. A while ago I made this project which is one of the most popular in my blog and people have a lot of questions about the materials, the technique I used to stamp on fabric and also how to sew them. The purses in my previous project were quite a bit different as I was using another kind of frames and they required another kind of pattern and sewing skills. I have tried different ways to stamp on fabric, also looking for the best materials to create my own designer fabric by using my stamping up stamps and the easiest technique to make this kind of purses with metal frames and I'm going to share that with you in this video. After watching this tutorial, you will be able to make these purses. They are fully lined, they have body, as you can see here, they are not floppy. You will be able to make them in different sizes. And you will be able to identify which is the most convenient metal frame for your purses. You can easily get sew in open channel purse frames like this one. Or you can also get glue in open channel frames like this one here. Now I'm going to talk about the materials we need to make this project. So first we have the fabrics. One day I was making curtains and I was fascinated for the quality of the blackout fabric. Easy and versatile to use, it doesn't fray, it offers strength, durability and great price. I also found that it's smooth, soft and it offers an amazing surface to stamp on. So we are going to use blackout to make these purses. For the lining or the fabric inside the purse, I would recommend to use a cotton fabric. This is 100% cotton. You can also use polycotton or something synthetic like this fabric or even waterproof or any kind of fabric really, but I really would recommend to use a cotton fabric like this one. For the inter lining, I would recommend to use a foam stabilizer or some thick interlining fabric like this one. This, this is Hanes Natural English Foam Drapery Interlining. This is another material for curtain making, just work perfectly for this kind of purses. You can also use any other interlining. I won't recommend to use iron on interfacing or something hard or stiff because the purses are going to get another shape and the interlining fibers like these ones are far much cheaper. Now let me show you the inks I have used to stamp on fabric. Basic black archival ink from Stamping Up is amazing and I also like archival ink from Ranger. Some pigment inks in strong colors work well on fabric and especially on blackout. And despite that it stays on is not suitable for stamping on fabric, it's a good alternative to stamp on blackout. I have made a small test just to show you the performance of the inks. These inks has been drying for 24 hours. This here is a station. The next one is Hobbycraft. The next one is Archival Ink from Ranger. And the last one is Archival Ink from Stampin' Up. They look pretty much the same at first glance. However, I found that black archival ink from Stampin' Up and black archival ink from Ranger are the best in terms of image definition. They were different on paper though. And now I'm testing them applying water to show you what might happen if you apply water on projects you have stamped with these inks. So, Archival inks are waterproof, so you won't have problem with those inks. It's possible that pigment inks fade or wash out like this one here. And a station is a station, it will stay there, okay? When stamping on fabric, the definition of the stamped image depends on the texture of the fabric and the kind of fabric, and also the time the ink has been on that material. Two years ago, I used pigment ink from Hobbycraft to stamp some little 
hanging hearts, and I wash them in the washing machine, and they are okay. But I wash them one year after stamping. Then I went ahead and I stamped these sentiments in a piece of blackout. I just want to try another pigment inks, and I'm using the same pigment inks from Hobbycraft, Distress Ink, this pigment ink is from Artist, and this one is also Hobbycraft. And this test is just to show you something that I found quite curious. So I apply water, and despite these two inks here are the same kind, one of them bleed and the other one no. These stress inks are dye inks and they are not suitable for stamping on fabric. And these two here, you can barely see them, they are also pigment inks. But you notice the difference between them and this one is huge. So if you are thinking in stamping on fabric and you want permanent results, you should stick to Archival inks. In the other hand, if you want to stamp a project with pigment inks, you need to be in mind that it has to be a project that it doesn't need to be washed. If you want to add color, alcohol-based markers should do the work. However, try them first to see if they bleed by themselves or when applying water. I care about endurability and definition, so I'm going to use pro markers today. There is, a, there is a wide variety of metal pores frames in the market, but we are going to use open channel pores frames today. They come in different sizes, and there are two kinds of frames. So in like this one. Which is this one here or glue in like this one here. Is this one here. This one here is also glue in, but I'm going to use these two frames today. And something very, very important is that these frames have something in common and is their length, this part here. All of them have two inches and a half length or six and a half centimeters because the pattern I'm going to draw today only fits perfectly open channel frames in any width, but only two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters length. Have a closer look of these frames. They have two channels at the top. They are not like this one I'm going to show you here. They look pretty similar, but they are different. If you see here, this part is completely different. So I'm showing you this because it's pretty easy to get confused when you are going to buy these frames. This small frame here, you see, it has that square shape in the top, more similar than the big one on the top than my friends here. And these frames here are more like this one here. They have a shape on the top. Let me show you the frame, this kind of frames. We are not going to use these frames today, okay? These kind of frames need a different pattern, which is something like this. So this is not what we are going to do today. The pattern to make the purses today is a square, but the width is slightly larger than the length. So we need to know how to calculate the measurement of this square to guarantee a perfect fit to these specific purse frames. One way to calculate the width of the pattern is adding the measurement of all the sides of the frame plus one inch and a half or four centimeters. And the length can be calculated by adding the measurement of all the sides of the frame plus one inch or two and a half centimeters. If that was a little bit confusing for you, I have my own formula to do this. To calculate the width of the pattern for any kind of frame, I add to the width of the frame six and a half inches or 16 and a half centimeters. And for the length, I add the width of the frame plus six inches or 15 centimeters. This formula applies for any size of this specific 
force frames. Now for the interlining, we will need to add the width of the frame plus three inches or seven and a half centimeters. And it will be the same length than the other pattern. Here I have another pattern. This is for a larger force frame and I apply the same formula. To calculate the width, I add the width of the pores frame plus six inches and a half or 16 and a half centimeters. And for the length, I added the width of the pores frame plus six inches or 15 centimeters. Exactly the same as the previous one. And for the interlining, I add to the width of the frame three inches or seven and a half centimeters and I keep the same length. And I can keep going and giving you examples of my formula. This is an even larger frame. So this is eight inches frame. And then I add six and a half inches here or 16 and a half centimeters. And to the length, I add the width of the frame plus six inches or 15 centimeters. For the lining, I add the width of the purse frame plus three inches. You see three inches there. And for the length, I keep the same length. So these are my patterns for all the purses in different sizes. So this formula applies to make patterns for open channel purse frames, two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters length. And now let me show you quickly how I cut the fabrics. I'm going to use this pattern today, which is for a six inches three quarters frame or 17 centimeters pulse frame, which is this one here. So I'm going to grab my blackout fabric and I'm going to place the pattern on top. There are different ways to cut a fabric. I think everybody has a personal way to do the things. So you can use a ruler and you can trace the pattern on the fabric and you can cut that with scissors or you can also use a rotary cutter to do that in a quicker way. Any weight is valid. Remember that the wider side of the fabric is the width and the shorter is the length. Now I'm going to fold the pattern to cut the fabric for the interlining. And I'm going to do this using scissors. Like so. Please do not tell anybody that I use a candle to hold the fabric in place. This is the kind of bad habit I cannot get rid of, but the candle is the candle and it works okay. <laughs> now I'm going to cut the fabric for the lining, which is the same size than the exterior fabric. And when I do this, I really want to apologize because English is not my first language and I know I'm not great at speaking English. It is just me trying to do my best to share my experience with you. If I say something and you don't understand, please do not hesitate in contacting me and I will be happy to answer your questions. So this is the fabric I'm going to stamp. This is the lining and this is the interlining. With these pieces ready to go, I'm very close to start stamping the fabric. All I have to do now is iron in the material to make it flat and make easy the stamping. Today I'm going to use pedal pusher stand set and it has this beautiful bag. It also has different stamps, small stamps, and you can create with them different compositions. For my project today, I only going to use two stamps in the set, this little basket and the bag. And 
and I'm going to grab my Stampin' Up! grid pad. I think this paper offers a perfect surface to work. It's not so hard and it's not so soft. I need to identify the width and the length of my fabric to be able to position it or to stamp the image in the right direction. I have to stamp the image through the length of the fabric. I'm going to fold the fabric in half, like so. And I'm going to stamp above the line the bike in this direction and below the line the bike in the opposite direction. And that's how I get my pattern running the same way in both sides of the purse. And now I'm going to start stamping. Stamping on fabric is very similar than stamping on paper. The only difference is that it's necessary to leave the stamp for a little bit longer on the material, waiting for the fabric to absorb the ink. You might need to apply a little bit of extra pressure on the stamp and avoid at all costs wobbling. And perhaps you will notice that some images are going to be more crisp than others and that's okay, don't worry. Imperfect stamping is also beautiful, so do your best and enjoy stamping. Hey, if you wanna play, make it about a place. It'll take creation, imagination. Try to draw outside the line. Do not forget to turn around the fabric especially if you are using an unidirectional image. By alternating the stamped images, you create an order and also fill the space. Do not forget to stamp half image in the edges. It's okay and it looks like if this piece of fabric was good from a larger one. Clean your stamps often in your hands as you can stain the fabric. You will also find that the smallest the image, the easiest to stamp. Adding colors to these bikes using alcohol-based markers is quite easy. However, if you are stamping another image and it's a larger image, you could try suitable paints. And I have finished adding colors. You can add as many colors as you want and try different things. You can even create shadows using the markers, but I'm going to leave it just like that. This is the fabric I'm going to use to teach you how to make the purse. Get ready because in the next video, I'm going to show you how to sew these beautiful clutch purses. Thank you very much for watching this video and happy crafting. See you in the next tutorial. Bye.